very good afternoon to all. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, I'll be talking about modeling and verification of uh, systems. I'll present two case studies, uh, uh, which are broadly motivated by uh, the various projects that are going on uh, at IIT Hyderabad. Okay, and we'll, we'll see applications of the uh, techniques for modeling and verification and model checking laws. Uh, Okay, so this is the uh, main outline. Uh, this is the outline of my talk. Uh, we first justify why mod why should we go in for model-based design. This is probably mm -hmm. fairly obvious to most people, but let's like, this now let's go through this. Why go through the uh, process of uh, model-based design? And then we look at the hybrid automaton option uh, for modeling and verification of cyber systems. We'll see why it's a very lucrative very uh, nice and natural model for modeling cyber And then we look at a case study, right? And then we look at some stochastic modeling of, uh, of some of the systems that are being developed at, uh, at IIT Hyderabad under the cyber physical systems project. And followed by, yeah, and the case study. All right, so first let's go to the first uh, uh, slide, the first case study. Uh, uh, which is basically the, so. This is the this case study also illustrates the use of hybrid automata for modeling cyber physical systems. Okay, and this is joint work with Akhilesh, a, a BTEC student, an ex BTEC student, uh, this is graduated. Okay, so let's look at why going. So, so what do you mean model based design? For cyber Describing a very fairly complicated uh, system, so you uh, better use precise semantics uh, for describing such and modeling such systems. Formally specify requirements that are expected out of the system, and then match basically match the the specification of the system, of the system against the specification of the requirements. Okay, so that's generally the forward paradigm for any formal verification. Uh, so. What are the advantages? It's widely for safety. So this kind of so you you are specifying the system and then you are specifying certain requirements in a formal manner and then uh, arguing mathematically, arguing formally that this system is going to satisfy these requirements, right? And that kind of guarantee is extremely important for safety. And secondly, uh, early detection of errors is, is 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 something that you get if you model it. Before, even before you build and design the system, you go in for this kind of a model-based systematic design, and then verify it for uh, for uh, for the necessary conditions, requirements. Then you can actually detect uh, errors at early on as against you know building the system and then you And then you then by modeling you develop a better understanding of the system, and therefore it leads to better design. So let's quickly discuss uh, what are so again. This is a problem going back to the basics. But let's dis let's discuss some way, some important characteristics of cyber physical systems. Right? They have a discrete component, typically the control logic and the, and the computer, the compu computation that's going on. Wherever there's a computing element, a discrete computing element, you have to do that's the discrete component of cyber physical systems. There's also a continuous component, typically the controlled environment, things like sensor data, temperature, pressure, and so on. That's continuous component. And cyber physical systems generally go for, I mean, there are generally systems that execute forever. It's not unlike a normal competition that you, you run the program, it stops with an output wrong or right. Here, it's a system which does infinite execution. And there are several concurrent, concurrent processes. It's not still just one process that's done. Several concurrent processes which has Network communication, right? This network communication is an extra phase that phase that I added, and with this addition of this extra phase, the phase it actually becomes exactly cyber physical system. Okay. So this this this, this uh, so so without this phase, it's actually hybrid systems. The moment you add this network communication phase, it's actually exactly cyber physical systems. Right? 
So <coughs> what I am saying is that cyber physical systems are very similar to hybrid systems. Hybrid systems also have all, those pro all these properties, except that this is not emphasized in hybrid systems. So, so clearly uh, hybrid systems and all the techniques that are used for modeling and verification of hybrid systems automatically lend themselves for formal modeling. Not for, 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 for cyber physics, formal modeling of cyber physics. So formal modeling is, is, is very well studied, very old. Uh, very old for discrete systems, we use finite automata and its presence, variants of this uh, finite automata. Continuous systems are typically modeled by differential equations. Hybrid systems, in, in, when, you're, when you uh, talk about hybrid systems, you have to kind of combine finite automata and differential equations, and that's when you get what are called hybrid automata. Okay? So our basic strategy will be this. You, you have a cyber physical system and you model it as a hybrid, you, you think of it as a hybrid system, model it as a hybrid automatic. So that's the modeling part, okay? So uh, so let's quickly look at what, uh, a quick and uh, dirty introduction of what uh, uh, hybrid automata are. Hybrid automata are, uh, so these things define a hybrid automata completely, uh, hybrid automata it has a set of real valued variables, right? That these real valued variables are the ones that help you in simulating the continuous part of the system. And then there's a control graph, a control multi graph, just like you have in finite automata, right? Which, which has a collection of <coughs> vertices, which are called modes in the language of hybrid automata. And then there are these edges which make, allow you to make the control system. There are these in, uh, init, uh, there, 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 there are these functions which specify for each vertex what exactly are the values that these continuous valued value variables take initially in the beginning of the computer. Then there are these invariates. For each vertex, these invariate functions they tell you what under what constraints, under what limits, what are what are what are the invariant invariant characteristics of the continuous value, uh, variables, right? These are different functions which label the vertices. Observe that these are functions that label the vertices of the control. I will look at an example so that things become clear. Flow tells you, flow is actually the differential equation which tells you how these continuous value, continuous value variables change, right? During the course of computation. Jump tells, specifies for each edge, the potential source and potential target values, each of these uh, uh, real value variables. And events is a finite set of, it's a finite discrete set of events uh, with an edge level function where you get each edge certain elements from this alphabet. So here's an example. Okay, I'm sorry to keep this back from here properly. Uh, so this, this is the mode that I was talking about. So these circles are actually the uh, states, the, the equivalent of what you would see in automata theory, which is states, right? So if you, if you can see, it's, this is state, build, this is stop, this is uh, train, start, and so So there are different, uh, these different modes. And these are the, the uh, these are so Z prime, Y prime, these are Z and Y, X, Y, and Z are the real value variables. And z prime is equal to one, y prime is equal to one. They tell you the rate of change of this real value variable when in this particular mode, right? So each of these modes, each of these circles have different differential equations, right? When you are in this mode, this particular bunch of differential equations uh, are, are, are affected. Then there is this invariant y is less than or equal to ten. When in this state, this particular real value variable, namely y better or be always less than equal to 10. So that kind of places an invariant condition on the real value variable. Whenever this invariant is violated, you jump to some other state. Accordingly. So then again, a, a new bunch of different equations state. Okay. So you keep jumping between these two states and uh, following the rules of invariance and, and jump condition. Okay. So, uh, so this is roughly what uh, 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 a hybrid automata is. And it's this important 
fact, uh, is, 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 it's a very useful fact that it's possible to compose different hybrid automata using labels, synchronization labels that can be in this context. It's something which, which, which is, which you'll see that it's a very useful uh, feature of this. Okay, now once you have the model, once you have the model of a hybrid system or a cyber physical system, what you have to do is basically, so that's a, so when, when, when you talk about a hybrid automaton, it's a formal mathematical specification of, of the hybrid system at hand. Right? It's a formal in mathematical model, it's a formal in mathematical specification of how the system is, is going to work. Against this, so you have to now, since that is formal, you have to also look for a way of specifying, formally specifying requirements. So typically, uh, logic, temporal logics are used in order to specify uh, uh, the requirements that are expected of the uh, hybrid system. So example requirement would be safety, something bad may not happen. Lightness, something good eventually happens, right? And duration, something happens only for a fraction of time. So these are typical expectations of the system. You, so if, you have uh, an ATM machine or, or, or air conditioner and you wouldn't want it to suddenly fail. Right? So something bad never happens. Right? Something good eventually happens, so eventually uh, the money comes out for so, so, so these are the expectations out of a system and these are, these are the various requirements that one would naturally expect out of a system. And these things can be specified in what are called integrated computer logics. We shall not go to this, but the, the point is, the underlying point is that you can formally specify requirements of a hybrid system. Okay. Uh, now, the, now comes the algorithm. You have the you have the nice formal model, uh, which is a hybrid automaton. You know how to formally specify the requirements, right? Now one has to, now matching this the formal specification of the system against the formal specification of the requirements is an algorithmic activity. And that is automatic verification, right? Uh, and model checking. So verify the formally designed system against the formally specified requirements. Symbolic model checking is, an, is one of the approaches for, uh, for this. So, uh, and there is a symbolic model checker for linear hybrid automata called HITECH, which has, which has been around for almost for 15, 20 years now. Uh, and it, so uh, we will see that the the application, the, the case study that we did, we will we, we'll use this particular model checking, symbolic model checking tool for that case study. Okay, so here is the, uh, so this is the case study of Arvind Gudman and this is also motivated by some other, another project that we are doing, uh, that is but it shows how you can combine different areas. So there are, so the idea is to prevent flooding in a state. Right? And the setting, the problem setting is this. There are n sites in a state. Right? So that you go here, Water channels between some of the sites are there. There are pipes between some of those uh, sites. And some sites drain water out of the system. So they drain it into a river. Right? Flood gates, there are flood gates which open the water into the water channels that uh, along the actuators to op operate it. So you would open the, jam uh, the floodgate at one point, the water drains to another point in the, in, the, in, the, in the city, another site in the city. And then you are also equipped with sensors that detect the present, the present water level and the rate of rise of the water level and so on. So these are the assumptions that we are making. And these are not unrealistic assumptions, especially in, in, uh, uh, in, in we'll see that it's not unrealistic in developed countries at least, to have all this so a central control room that has obtained the sensor data and decides how to operate the, the floodgates. What should be the sequence of floodgates such that no place in the in the city gets dropped? And so uh, the goal is that the idea is that we need to know how to operate the floodgates to prevent flooding at any given point and at any given point place. So our friends from Japan here would be familiar with this GFANS project. So it's a Tokyo flood management system. What happens is that there are these silos at different parts of the city. So, uh, and when water fills up here, 
you open this crane and it goes to this silo and then this silo and this this silo. And finally, there's a reservoir after which you pump it. This is a this, this is an example application of this total flood management system. It's a, supposed to be an engineering marvel. It's there to the field of education. Okay, so graphically speaking, now we're back to the uh, uh, formal. So N sites represented by this vertex is over there. And lower and upper limits of water levels uh, for every site <coughs> is specified. So the water level is array, and there's a lower limit, small array, and an upper limit, small array, below which you should not go. If there exists a water channel from site I to site J, there is a direct edge I comma J, right, and a flood gate and a flood gate G I J that is located at the mouth of the channel, at the mouth of the of the uh, pipe. And then there is a delay associated with these gates because these are massive gates. You don't so it's, a, it's not that as soon as you push the button, the the, the gate goes up. So there is a delay associated with the operation of these gates. Okay. And this is what we have we have to look at. So some uh, so these are the problems. This is a formal case number of problems. A flat gate configuration is a bit string B with one bit, bit each for the floodgate that can take closed or open values, right? And what is the strategy? The strategy is a transition function that takes as input the current floodgate configuration, the sensor data, and outputs the next configuration. Open gate number one. So right now all gates are closed. Open gate one, four, and seven, for example. Right? So that's that's the transition that we are talking about. The problem of, problem of verification is to, to figure out given the uh, a given strategy for flood gate management is safe, that is the water level always remains within safe limit at all the sites. Now observe that this is very it's essentially a cyber physical system. You have sensor networks, you have this actuator, <coughs> you have data data that is coming in and uh, uh, you are trying to uh, keep this, this the, all the sites in safe usage. It's a it's, it's essentially at the heart of it it's it's a there are elements of cyber physical systems. Okay, so the hybrid automaton will have two types of discrete locations, one type, one type of, for configurations and one type for relays. For a given configuration, these are the invariants, right? For a given configuration C, these are the invariants. Then for all the uh, uh, levels at various cities, it should be between the upper and lower limit. Flow conditions can be derived by the rain at that site. site minus uh, plus what is coming in from the different other uh, sites minus what is going out into this. So this is the differential equation that, de that governs the rise and fall of the water level at that particular site. Right? And then dump coefficient conditions from all flows to which configuration, some open, some close, you jump, right? So that depends what dump conditions are you going to bet on, depends on the strategy that you are going to have. For location corresponding to delay, there is a clock variable. Uh, which, so the clock variable has slope one, uh, uh, and the invariant is that it it opens into. Uh, so for the uh, for the modes corresponding to delay, there is a variable clock variable, and it it, it the clock variable operates for just two minutes of time. By then, the gate is open. That's the this thing. And so, uh, we let's take an example of two sites where in, I mean, so there's a site, a site which is up a high, on a higher slope and there's one at a lower uh, slope. And for example, if you are considering the, the, the mode OC, then the flow conditions is that uh, the, the, the rate of change is that this is open, therefore water is going out from one to two. And the same water is coming into, into the, Invariant for uh, into the level differential equation for the second site. Right? So L1 dot the differential equation that governs L1 is R1 minus uh, basically it's dL1 by d2 dt is equal to R1 minus I, uh, I12 and dL2 by dt is R2 plus I12. Okay, and these are the invariants always, right? So the water level should always be uh, between safety limits for both the sites. And the example jump condition, I mean, it depends on your strategy. And the example jump condition is that if the water level falls below 5, go to let, uh, go to leave in CC. This is an example. So what you're saying is that uh, if the water level at site 1 falls below 5, you don't want it to completely drain, so you close the first gate. 
Of course, there is a delay associated with closing as well, so you go to an intermediate delay CC and then ultimately it goes to the CC. Okay. Uh, all right. So, uh, so this is the uh, for delay uh, OC. Uh, this is for for another site uh, for for another configuration, and you get this. All right. So you can actually based on this, you can actually revise a tool right, when in the process of doing it. So actually, it turns out that it's not very easy for general general graphs. Right. For a nice line graph, which doesn't have too many nodes, it's, it's okay. If you have a general graph, these are notoriously hard problems, right? Some of them are actually undecidable, uh, many of them are key space complete and so on. So, so you have a high tech running at the background, so there is floodgate management wrapper on it, around it. You have a sensor network which tells you current water level strategy. This state tells you, sends the strategy as the high tech file. The strategy is implemented by some intermediate person sitting here. And then the feedback, which tells you that whether this strategy is going to keep you safe at all times or not, given the current uh, rainfall conditions and so on. And then uh, you, you actually give the actuator commands according to a safe strategy. Okay, so this is kind of under development. So this is ongoing work. So one thing is that uh, the uh, one hybrid automaton for each site. Right now it's a, it's a, it's a same hybrid automaton for all the gate configurations. Instead, you can have for one hybrid automaton for each site, composed using synchronization labels that I mentioned in one of the slides that you can actually use this. Uh, the advantage is that it's safe, safe state, uh, state space. You, you can work with smaller state spaces. Otherwise, you have, if you have N gates, you're talking about totally N potential configurations. That's not a good idea. And it's easier to handle, even to program in the, in the high tech tool, it's actually easier. Future directions, general city topology, I and kind of skeptical about it, but that's one thing that one can happen. And what do you mean by generic city topology? The DAGs are not line graphs, it is a general graph. That is not line graph. And the synthesis of necessary and sufficient conditions for safety, you can actually, is, is it possible to generate uh, sufficient conditions rather than just verify? Right? Many of these tools allow that, and we have to looking at and now, five minutes, okay. Sorry, I, I did not. Okay, so uh, so this is another joint work with one of our VTech students, he's, he's actually here, Anmol. And this is about being, building up occupancy model. Why would you want, I'll run through this slide very quickly in interest of time. So why would you want to do this? Because energy expenditure and appliance requirement of a building is proportional to the occupancy. More number of people you would, uh, the expenditure, energy expenditure, more is more, you have to deploy more air conditions and so on. And then you, you need to justify the deployment of smart energy management systems, right? which is kind of equivalent to the safety requirements that we saw in the previous slides. Right? What do you mean by safety here? You just say that, you know, look, at least I will save 20% energy, energy if I deploy these energy systems. So to make such just, uh, justifications, you would need uh, some kind of a modeling tool. And to estimate the number and capacity of environment and lighting control appliances. So these are why you would want to do it. Okay, so typical questions that you would want to ask is for what fraction of time would occupation of a room be at, uh, less than 20%, not very heavily occupied, very heavily occupied, what is the peak occupancy, etc. So these are the typical questions that you would want to ask. A lot of uh, recent times, it's not an old field in some sense. Recent time, there have been some uh, uh, contributions. Of Single rooms, household occupancy, you take a very small household kind of setting. One room plus an office room. The single room is an office room. They talking about. And then there are different techniques, the agent based modeling, where each person is modeled as an agent. And you include graphical models, you get some kind of a hybrid approach to modeling of occupation, occupancy. Okay? Now, the problem here is that we are handling specific cases or very complex approaches. And this is scope for generalizing and simplification of the approach. So that's what we'll attempt. Right? So we'll, 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 see, we'll, we'll describe quickly what we have done. So this is a quickly an, uh, this thing. A building consists of some, let's say, three rooms interconnected by corridors. People arrive at a building in a polygon fashion at a rate that depends on the time of the day. Right? In the morning, people come in a lot. Each person goes to one of the rooms according to a distribution that again depends on the time of day. People exit each room according to an exponential distribution. 
if you read that sequence again on the time of day, each person that exists as a destination according to some probability in this probability distribution, actually again on the time definition on the time of day. All parameters are to be learned from real data. Okay. And so this is an example building topology. So there are these three rooms, people come from here, from outside, and then they distribute to different rooms. And uh, depending on this lambda, uh, uh, this lambda, and then they go according to this probability distribution. And they exit from this room according to this probability dist uh, this, this distribution uh, with mean at mu1, mu2, mu3. Okay. And so I, we simulated this, and these are the parameters. So this is a 10 hour office kind of a setting we took. Okay. Uh, initially, for the first two hours, a lot of people come. The rate of it coming is high, then it comes down. Lunch, people go, uh, people again come back after going. So this is, go, this is going up. In the morning, nobody goes up, hopefully. It's a good office. And then people. Uh, stay there, not many people leave. Then a lot of people leave for lunch, they come back and then they leave at, at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock. Right? And then there is this inter room distribution at any given point in time. Let's uh, say out of room at lunch break and end of the day, 95% go out, 0.2 and 0.3 go to the other rooms. So it is some kind of a distribution. Each room maximum capacity is assumed to be 150. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at that, then the occupancy for plot looks like this. Right? The first room, according to that topology, as an occupancy that look, pattern that looks like this. On this vertex, you have population. This vertex, you have time, right? In 10 units of minutes, in 10 minutes units. So it goes up initially, peaks here, and comes back down for the lunch, and then peaks up and so on. This is for room two, right? So if you observe carefully here, it goes up to 100. Oops, sorry. It goes up to, uh, uh, sorry, room two also goes up to 100. But room 3, because of the various probability distributions that we took, it doesn't go much very high. Okay. So this is an example of how we can simulate uh, this thing. All right. So if you look at one room building, just take one room. This is how the pattern looks like. All right. This is uh, the population builds up, falls down, and builds up. Right. And uh, for similar parameters, like, right. And now I would like you to contrast this with this picture. Oh, okay. This is uh, Dr. Rajalakshmi uh, from electrical department. They, did actually, they actually did an experiment for, for the lab based on the smart room. So their occupancy pattern looks something like this. This is actual occupancy pattern. And this is the power saving that they did. So they could report something like 30% energy savings if you deploy these intelligent systems, which shut off the AC when people are not there and so on. So it kind of correlates. So when the occupancy is low, the, the energy consumption is low actually. All right, so this is some future work, generalized model including corridor delays. People, most people spend most of the time in the corridor chatting. So incorporate that. The learn and correlate with ex experiments that are ongoing at IIT Hyderabad. So finally, you can actually think of building a tool for, uh, for building occupancy, estimating building occupancy, incorporating various models, not just what we have the simplistic model that we have taken, but even other models that we take them as uh, potential methods for simulation. Question is, can we use it for the new IIT Hyderabad campus? Okay, if I have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. <coughs> Thank you. 
Uh, now I request uh, Mr. Atashi to come and uh, 